the Independent Democratic Conference. What the heck is it? That's next. Each poker chip is a New York State Senator. There are 63 seats in the New York State Senate. One seat is vacant, leaving 62. There are 31 Republicans and 31 Democrats. Senator Simka Felder is a Democrat, but he caucuses with the Republicans, so we'll put him in that stack, which makes the score 32 Republicans and 30 Democrats. They're organized into three groupings called conferences. A conference is a group of politicians that puts their head together on specific goals, kind of like birds of a feather. So while there are 31 Democrats, only 23 of them are with the Democratic Conference. Eight of them make up the Independent Democratic Conference. When the IDC works with Republicans, things really happen. The other Democrats, not so happy. So to make sense of this, we need a little history. In 2008, Democrats had grabbed control of the Senate for the first time since the 1960s, and then they proceeded to blow it. Here's how. In 2009, there was a parliamentary coup. Even though Democrats had a majority, Pedro Espada, a Bronx Democrat, and Hiram Montserrat, a Queens Democrat, voted along with 30 Republicans to elect Dean Skelos, a Nassau County Republican, as the new majority leader of the Senate, replacing Malcolm Smith, a Queens Democrat. Montserrat and Espada eventually returned to their Democratic roots, ending the crisis, and Espada became the majority leader. In 2010, as sitting majority leader, Espada was indicted on six federal counts of embezzlement and theft, and then on December 14, he was stripped of his leadership position. Montserrat was indicted on federal con corruption charges. Democrats lost Senate seats that November. Then in 2011, that was a pivotal year. After the drama of 2009 and 2010, Republicans were back in control of the Senate. When people said the Democrats blew it, that's what they're talking about. Dean Skelos was back as majority leader. That was the year that Senator Jeffrey D. Klein, whose Senate district spans North Bronx and parts of Westchester, along with three other Democrats, established the Independent Democratic Conference. That hard-to-get Democratic majority had slipped away. Klein had been the Democrats' top election strategist, and he took some heat from the Democratic conference leader at the time, John L. Sampson of Brooklyn. In 2011-2012, Dean Skelos was Senate Majority Leader. In 13-14, with the IDC in place, Dean Skelos and Jeff Klein take turns being Senate Majority Leader. Apparently, they shared the role, alternating who would preside over the Senate every two weeks. It must have been a very complicated relationship. In 2015, Skelos is the majority leader. Republicans are in control. However, he resigned mid-year due to federal corruption charges. The U.S. Attorney's Office released recordings of wiretapped phone conversations between Skelos and his son, Adam. In one of them, Skelos explains that he supports the IDC as a divide-and-conquer strategy to keep Republicans in power. Let's listen. You've got to keep them separated. And that's what this is going to do. Keep them separated and fighting and hating each other. And that's what's worked for us for the last six years, is keeping them at each other's throats. And that's what this will do. In 2015, Republican John J. Flanagan becomes majority leader of the Senate and remains to this day in April 2017. The IDC starts out with four members in 2011, and now there are eight. Four of the senators are people of color, two of them are women. All eight IDC members are Democrats. So how does it operate? It's basically just a group that educates its members on specific legislation and policy initiatives. Then it derives its power by being able to go to either of the other conferences and work out deals. Here's what we want. Here's what you want. Let's take turns getting what we want. The IDC exists in part because the regular Senate Democrats haven't been willing or able to work with their counterparts on the Republican side. Here are some really important laws that the Senate passed, the Assembly passed, and the governor signed into law. That would not be here without the support of the Independent Democratic Conference. In the 
world of President Donald Trump, people are suddenly paying attention to how legislative conferences and caucuses really work. So does the IDC help or hurt? Is it a divide and conquer scheme or is it a gridlock buster? I'd love to hear from you in the comment box. If you're watching on Facebook, like the page. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, click the bell, and that way you'll get notification when I publish new videos. Thank you.